despite the uh, disembodied, impersonal, <laughs> virtual thing, it is also the hyper-personal, right? We get to see Tarek's bedroom. <laughs> we also get to see my bedroom, my old bedroom. I'm stuck in Tennessee. I was down here to clean up tornado stuff and got stuck here. This, the, the book is written in sort of like, you know, smallish vignettes. Um, and, and so I was trying to devote each little vignette um, to something that was really necessary for the story. Um, and, uh, and then just proceeded that way. Um, so I was doing all of that and I wanted to come away with something that was as complete as possible um, to kind of show like uh, that that I could do that basically as a, a personal challenge with my MFA. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was just trying to keep everything that was essential. Um, and I wanted it to be a fast read. I wanted to kind of prove that I could get people to read a hundred pages, you know, like in a, a day or two. Um, and, uh, and so far, I think it was pretty successful, you know, so happy with it. I would say so. You've gotten some really great uh, support from from BuzzFeed and Chicago Tribune, listing it as a very uh, a much anticipated novel. Um, yeah, I'm very thankful for that. I think that's really great. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, I'm really interested in the uh, your use of backstory in this brief novel. It's hard to uh, it's hard to pull off. The, the kind of backstory that you use here. Um, and it really gets at kind of some of the roots um, of these young men. Yeah. Um, who are in this book, they share similar qualities that might be quickly summed up as toxic. Um, why did you choose to give these particular guys the attention well, um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I was interested in kind of creating constraints for myself. Um, so I, I, well, before I say that, I will say that I'm kind of interested in the, in the relationships between men, you know, um, and how they express themselves or, or don't express themselves. Um, and, and how destructive that can be. Um, and, and so I wanted to kind of um, display that. Um, and, you know, a lot of this stuff comes just from car rides I've been in with other people, you know, and, and um, not that like, my friends aren't psychopaths or anything like that, but um, you know, one thing that you have taught, it, or, or at least a bit of advice that you gave me was to, to find places to push chaos. Um, and that really resonated with me. Um, and it made, you know, these two characters kind of come alive and it made writing it pretty fun and, and something that I look forward to doing, uh, which is, I think, well, pretty responsible for why it was written so quickly. Um, you know, it was really, I was, uh, I was able to sympathize with both characters, um, despite how, um, how differently they, they handle their circumstances and, and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, there's something about uh, the, these characters and, and coming back home from a long absence. Um, I was also influenced a little bit by the the um, James Joyce um, short story in Dubliners um, about the the newspaper man and who visits his friend in Dublin and how that um, kind of and results in its own kind of train wreck um, and, uh, and so yeah it was a little bit of all of this stuff kind of just going on in my mind um, and uh, in trying to um, accurately um, 
portray the thing the way things would have gone sometimes in in this and the circumstances of these characters that's great you certainly um from the very first sentence light a fuse and just let it burn to its end um thank you man thank you there's um there's kind of a trick to writing about chaos and that is um maintaining clarity it's, you have to maintain clarity especially when the characters are drunk or fucked up or um yeah. whatever you can't slip into that with them right there's a um that be a mimetic fallacy right right i think the the reader know, has to know that even if that even if uh even if we don't know where exactly we're going we have to trust the driver um yeah to get us there and we're going to get end up at a pretty interesting place and the the uh the ending that you where you leave us is is a riveting um is a riveting place of brief glimpses of not uh i don't know i don't know if redemption is too strong of a word but i certainly felt that kind of kind of pulsing there in the life um yeah and that felt to me what is behind the uh the narrator's um vision and quest toward death which is it's actually it's actually kind of purpose and meaning and even life that he's looking for because he hasn't found it anywhere else yet so it's um it's a really moving journey that we go on um thank you very much <clears throat> Thank you.